like to uh, introduce the first speaker, uh, Suburata Tsukada from IIT Guwahati. Uh, his presentation title is uh, Minimize Support for Identifying uh, Assessive States for Mobile Interaction Design. Okay, please get started. Uh, namaste and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Subrata Tikadar from Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. In this work, we have identified the human affective state or emotional state through a minimalist approach. So, first of all, uh, we should discuss why affective computing in ACI. What is the importance of affective computing in ACI? So, if we can uh, use the emotion or affective state of users to make a better interactive system or we can uh, tell that affective interacting system that will obviously improve the usability and user satisfaction. Your computer will serve uh, you as per your emotional state. So, we mainly focused on mobile ACI because uh, we can clearly observe the explosion of mobile devices, uh, small handed mobile device like smartphone, tablet, this, this kind of devices. So, to identify, uh, sorry, to uh, design any interactive system, particularly affective interactive system, the first challenge is how to identify the affective state of the user, how to identify the emotional state of the user. There are different challenges, how to identify, when to identify, and particularly when we are using mobile device to identify affective state that are more challenging because mobile devices have some limitation, say for example, power backup, processor, memory, this kind of thing. So, there are different approaches uh, to identify human affect and emotion. Like, uh, we can say, uh, we can say, uh, first uh, is um, emotion identification through facial expression. So, this is a well established theory, we can identify emotional state from facial expression. But, in this case, uh, computer vision, image processing, this kind of things are required, which are not always possible in case of low end, uh, low cost, small handled mobile devices. Secondly, we can also identify uh, emotional state uh, using body movement like gesture, posture, this kind of things. Again, a lot of setup, cameras, probes, this kind of things are required. So, that is also not applicable in case of mobile interaction design. Third one is very uh, well established and accepted that is identification of emotional state using uh, physiological signal like EEG, EMG, uh, heart rate, galvanic skin rate, so galvanic skin, uh, skin response. So, uh, this is a very good approach and we can identify user emotional state uh, very accurately. But uh, uh, imagine if a particular user is always wiring this kind of devices, wire probes, uh, this is not at all possible. Furthermore, uh, this will affect the mobility of the devices. That is one of the most uh, reason for, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, to, uh, the multimodal approach, multimodal approach is uh, nothing but combination of all these approach. You can uh, adapt the facial expression with body movement or uh, physiological signal. So, one or two, uh, more than two approaches, uh, uh, actually more than one approaches are used to identify uh, emotional state in case of multimodal. So, all these are uh, not always possible in case of mobile interaction design. So, we have uh, chosen the behavioral aspect. Behavioral aspect like user's touch pattern, user typing pattern. So, if we can identify uh, emotional state of the user uh, using the touch pattern or typing pattern, that will be acceptable in case of mobile interaction design. But in case of uh, typing pattern, one major limitation is there. Like you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, assume that all the interaction contains keyboard type. So it is better to identify emotional state with touch. We will not only depend upon the typing data. Anywhere, everywhere on the screen, if uh, uh, user is touching, then from there, if we can identify the emotional state of the user. Now, there are uh, two type of uh, tasks. Uh, the first one is uh, 3D motion gesture. 
3D motion gesture is not uh, actually the uh, direct touch pattern, but uh, different embedded sensors like accelerometer, this kind of things can uh, give some data how you are uh, using or you are uh, handling the device. And sometimes both 2D touch gesture and 3D dust, uh, 3D motion gestures, those are commonly used to identify emotional state. So, in our approach, we have focused on the to identify emotional state using on the 2D touch gesture. That is direct touch in the on the touch screen. And we have also assumed the small handle device because if, uh, we cannot assume that everyone has iPhone. So, we have assumed small handle device, low cost small handle device and most importantly we have used only two touch features. One is number of touch events and second one is how much pressure is generating while a user is touching his device. Events, uh, let me uh, explain what is touch event. Uh, when we, uh, there are uh, different touch pattern like some, uh, sometimes we pat, sometimes we scroll, sometimes we uh, swipe. So, uh, even in case of pat, when we touch, this is called action down. I mean, when we are putting our finger on the touch screen and when we are removing our finger, that is called action up. So, even in case of uh, pat also, where due to slight movement of our finger, some move action is generated. So, we are considering all this action down, action up and action move as events. So, we are uh, capturing action, uh, all these events and pressure generated on each event. <coughs> now, what type of emotional state or affective state we have identified? This is a Geneva emotional wheel where 20 emotional states are in wheel shape. So, we, uh, we have uh, adapted the circumplex model of emotion where continuous emotional is discretized uh, based on the arousal level and valence level. Arousal level means how, how much he is aroused, how much he is excited or how much he is frustrated and balance means whether a user is staying on that state or he want to change the state. Like we do not want to be sad, we do not want to be sorry, we want to be happy and we want to remain happy, we do not want to change uh, the state from happy to sad, but when we are sad we want to stay, we want to change our emotional state. So, once arousal level is identified, we can observe the rate of change of arousal. From there, we have identified the level of balance. So, using the circumplex model of emotion, we have applied, uh, we have used these two features I, I, I mentioned and using machine learning technique, we have classified the emotional state into this four state. High positive, high positive means high arousal, positive balance, low positive means low arousal, positive uh, balance, similarly low negative and high negative. So, in this uh, purpose we have uh, developed a very simple but effective game because we cannot collect the emotional data from the user by asking her or himself. Like uh, when I will ask, oh, how are you feeling? Are you in high arousal state? Or are, are you in low arousal state? Are you happy? How sad? If sad, how much sad? We, we should not ask the user directly because emotional states stay for a very short duration. So, when in, in, uh, one strategy can be followed and many researchers have followed like after completing the task, they have asked through some, some uh, method or questionnaire or uh, uh, taking feedback from the users. Uh, but it itself may change the emotional state of the user. Like some smile is shown, so this may. Uh, uh, so I have one minute, so I am going first. So we have designed this game. Uh, the game is uh, like the user have to touch a bucket where a ball is hidden. So if he or she can uh, touch or guess correctly, he will win, or otherwise he will lose. 
So there are uh, three modes, one is regular mode, ruining mode and losing mode. Regular mode is uh, fair mode, uh, if he or she can uh, trust correctly he will win, otherwise he will lose. And uh, in winning mode, the user will always win, whatever the bucket he or she does it. Uh, again, uh, in, uh, similarly in losing mode, every, every time he will win. So, but the user does not know uh, about this mode. So, we have uh, three, uh, we have assumed three seconds, although it is very hard to uh, assume uh, uh, appropriate time interval to uh, observe the rate of change of arousal, we have uh, assumed 3 seconds and it worked. So, uh, we have uh, used this uh, NAEP based K nearest neighbor decision tree and support vector machine classifier and this is the final result uh, where uh, we have achieved 96.75 average accuracy in case of SVM. Although other uh, classifiers have also provided uh, good results, so we can say that uh, all of these four uh, classifiers is equally applicable in our case. So, uh, advantage is this is a minimalist approach, we have not identified any work where only two features can give your emotional state. Secondly, it is unobtrusive, that is we have not directly used the user. And uh, some limitations is there, say if, if you can say that uh, uh, your mo uh, will your model identify all the 20 states of the gene of emotion, which I simply say no, but still this is good enough for identifying arousal balance level emotion and this kind of emotional state is used in many applications, sometimes it is based this type of emotional state. So we are uh, planning to more user study to validate the model. And we are also planning to uh, identify emotional state using easy signal as well as our model. So, and compare the both to validate our model. And in future, once it has been implemented and validated, we'll use this to design interactive, effective interactive system. Thank you. Okay, almost the time is up, so I would like to receive uh, the one, a short question. Any other questions from the audience? No? Okay, I'll, I'll take one. I, I have a question about uh, what kind of factor you use in the machine learning. Uh, so mainly you use uh, in the tapping, uh, uh, in the tapping speed or tapping uh, any kinds of the tapping place or? Uh, How many times the user is pressing and what amount of pressure is generated while the pressure, uh, so these two features we have used. So that's why the number of features is less, so we can use uh, decision tree as well as, uh, 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 we you can see the data are mostly linearly separable, meaning model using. So you can use the uh, SVM also, uh, with linear kernel. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I would like to introduce the next speaker. Uh, it's uh, Clement Seidler.